Hey guys, today's video is gonna be how to get faster with the beginner method. I know a lot of you guys just learn it to impress your friends or you just wanna get a little bit faster and you're not trying to get too serious about it. So this video will be for you and this will just be a bunch of tips you can apply right away for the beginner method. But if you're trying to be really fast, like sub 30 seconds, then you should probably leave the beginner method and just check out those tutorials there. So with that being said, let's get started. So a tip for the cross, if you have a piece here in the middle, so not on the bottom where we want it to be, and you wanna move it up to here, then all you have to do is see where the white sticker can quickly go. So in this case, um, if I move it up this way, it doesn't really become part of the cross, but if I move it up that way, it's incorrect, but it does go to be part of the cross. So I can remember that it can go up right here easily. So all I have to do is bring its location over to here, and then just move it up easily like that, and then move the whole cross back like that. So here's another example, if it can go up easily this way like that, then instead we're going to take its spot where it should go and bring that all the way over to here, like that. And then move this up and then put the whole cross back. So now once you finish the cross and put it on the bottom, then we're solving the first layer of corners. If you get something like this and you hold it on the right side and you're about to do the four moves to put it in here, you have to repeat that either one, three, or five times depending on where the white sticker is. So you might have noticed that when the white sticker is on the right side, you only have to do it once and then it goes in there like that. Now the worst case is when the white sticker is on the front and you have to repeat it five times. One, two, three, four, five. But instead there's another way you can do this and that's just by using your left hand instead. Because with your left hand, if you do the same four moves here, putting it into here, then this is on the side. So it's only gonna take one time like that. Now what if the white is facing up and you wanna put it in here? Then in this case, it's a little bit longer, but you can do it like this. You do the regular four moves, but the top turn you do twice to begin with. So like this, twice. So that's the first four moves. And then now it's just gonna be on the side and you just do it one more time. So again, that would look like this. So you can also use this fact when you take corners out of the bottom in case they're all stuck in the bottom like right here. So if I take this one out with my right hand and have it face front to begin with, then I end up with having it on top, which is not very good because that's the one that takes the longest. So instead, if I take this one out with my left hand by holding it on the side first, then I get white on the side, which is a lot easier to insert just like that. So what if you notice that as you're about to insert the corner, the edge is actually solved already, which means you don't wanna solve it again later, but if you put the corner in right now, it will unsolve that edge and you'll have to do it again. But instead there is a trick to put this one in here without taking the edge out. And so if white is on one of the two sides, then um, just hold it like this. So you're about, you're about to put it in um, with your right hand. And then so what you do is instead you move this away like that, so you're facing it, and then you do the same moves you're about to do. So those four moves, and then insert the corner now. And then that will actually save the edge. And now here's the same idea if the white was facing this way. So if it's facing this way, you should wanna do it with your left hand like this, so put it in like that, except before you do that, just move it away this way so you can see the white sticker here, and then do those, those moves you're about to do, and then now insert the corner, and there you go. Now the last case is what if white was facing up and you wanna save this edge as you put it in, then all you have to do is repeat the four moves three times. So don't do the shortcut I talked about, just go one, two, three. A common case you'll run into in the second layer is when you get this thing where this side is solved but these two are not and they need to switch places. So how you can solve this is by doing this. R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, and that solves it. Now, if you get one flipped edge in the second layer, this is also very common. Instead of putting another piece in to take it out, a shortcut you can do is by doing this. Hold it on the right side and then do R, U2, R prime. And then that puts it back here. So take the corner so you can see it on the side here and do that again, R, U2, R prime. Now you just insert this corner the way I showed with your, with your left hand. So like this, that solves it. So when you get to the last layer, when you have the line on top, the horizontal line, you can just do the algorithm once and that makes the whole cross on top. So if you get the backwards L, you have to do it twice, but there is a shortcut. What you can do is hold it on the front right here and then do a double layer front move like that. And then the regular four moves and then undo the double layer front move. And if you have no edges solved, you can just do a combination of them. Start with a single layer one like that, four moves and undo. And then you just get this. So you just do the double layer one and undo. 
Now, in the case that you get two opposite from each other, what I normally say is just do the algorithm once, and then you can find two next to each other and then do the algorithm again. Although you can just do it a little bit faster, and that goes like this. So if they're two opposite each other, it doesn't really matter how you hold it, hold it any way you want. And then here's what you do. You do the algorithm like this, and then you turn the top with your left hand. Then you do the algorithm again. And then if you do that correctly, you should be able to match up all of them now. When you get to the step where you have one corner in the right spot and everything else is wrong, then you normally hold it on the front right and do an algorithm either once or twice. So in this example, after doing it once, all of these are still wrong, so I'll have to do it again. And so there is a way to always have to only do it once. Okay, so if you have one here solved, the rest are not solved, then before you start the algorithm, actually look at this one on the left. So if any sticker from this piece matches this side color, then you're going to have to do it twice. So here we have orange, and that matches orange. So that's that means we're gonna have to do it twice. However, in this case, so this one's the correct one, we look at this one and it doesn't have any orange on it, then that means that we only have to do it once. So what can you do in the case where you have to do it twice? So in this case, when you see orange matches orange, what you should do instead is hold this one on your left-hand side instead but then now you'll have to do a different algorithm, although it is very similar. Instead of starting with your right hand, like push with right hand, right side up, and so on, you just start with your left hand, because this is on the left side. So push with left hand, left side up, and so on. Push with right hand, right side up, and then same thing, all downwards. And that guarantees you only have to do it once. Now this tip is for the very final step where you have to twist all of these corners, so you turn the cube upside down, and when you get a corner like this with yellow on the side, you will have to do the four moves once, twice for it to be solved. And then when you move this over and you see yellows on the front, you'll actually have to do it four times. There. So there's actually a faster way to avoid doing it four times, but you have to learn how to do the same moves but backwards. So for example, if we're starting with this one, instead of doing the four moves like that four times, we'll have to do the reverse of it, but just twice. So you have to know how to do the reverse of this algorithm, which goes like this. Turn the top with your right hand, right side up, and then top with the left hand, right side down. So if you just repeat that a few times to get it in your hands, um, then, so if you see yellow on the front here, you only have to do that version twice. So like this, twice, and then we'll move this one over, and this one's on the side. So we do the regular four moves twice. So no matter what, you'll always be doing the algorithm twice, it just depends which algorithm you pick. So this last step can actually be done very quickly if you know how to do that and you also know how to push with your ring finger using your left hand. So as you do these moves to grab the next corner over, you will just push with your ring finger left hand. So how that would work is something like this. So this one's yellow on front, so I'll do the reverse four moves twice, and then push with my left hand like that. And then here, regular four moves, push, reverse, oops, push, and then like that. So another example all the way through fast would be like this. So another thing that can help is being color neutral for when you pick the cross. So instead of starting the cross on the same color every single time, whether it's white or whatever color you use, then you can start on any color depending on which one is the best one to start with. For example, red here already has two pieces of its cross solved, so starting on red would be the best. Or on orange, here we can quickly solve two of the pieces and orange is also really good. So it just depends on every scramble and you'll pick different sides depending on which side is the best. Although if you have been using the same color for a long time, it will be hard to quickly transition into another color, but if you practice it more, then you'll be able to take advantage of very easy scrambles when other colors have most of their cross already done. So now we're gonna get into a tip that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it's actually gonna help you the most if you're able to incorporate this properly. And that is look ahead. So for example, if our cross is done and we're inserting this one into here, then instead of thinking about this, I can look at the next one and think, hmm, where should this go? And this one should go back here. So right after I insert that one, I'm just gonna quickly insert this one. Oh, and I see one back there. So I'm gonna insert this one now. And I see a white one back here. So then I can just do this one, take it out and put it in. So that is a lot faster if you're able to look at the next thing so that you don't have to pause every single time you do a step. So that applies to the first layer corners and to the second layer edges, because for the second layer edges, it's also just tracking one piece at a time. So for example, as I insert this one into here, so like that, I see this blue red. So I can quickly start the blue red right away. And then, oh, I see orange green. So I'll just do that one next and then there we go, no pauses all the way through the first layer and through the second layer. 
So that will be very difficult before you're familiar with all the steps. But if you're able to do this, then that will actually reduce your times by the most compared to any of these other tips I said. And lastly, it can be very hard to do a lot of the finger tricks or turn as fast as I did if you don't have a good speed cube. So it's hard to practice finger tricks unless you have a speed cube where you can turn very fast, where it doesn't take too much effort to make turns. That way you can avoid doing like entire wrist turns, which can be a lot slower than just doing finger tricks like that. So before we talk about speed cubes, if you want to actually learn these finger tricks because your cube is good enough, then you can check out the video right there. But for speed cubes, I buy my cubes from Speed Cube Shop. And there are a ton of cubes and they're all different prices, so it can be difficult to know which one you want exactly. And cubes that are more expensive aren't always better than the ones that are cheaper. There's no best cube and which cubes people get usually are just whichever ones they like more. I'll put the name of this one in the description as well as the one that I use as my main. But if you're new and you wanna try out a good speed cube that has magnets in it, which help to stabilize it, if you wanna try that for really cheap, there is the $10 Yushin Kylin V2M. That is one that you absolutely can't go wrong with and I'm personally able to average under 10 seconds with it. So I think that cube is totally fine, especially if you're new. And of course, if you wanna go past the beginner method and learn what most of the fastest cubers in the world use, then you can learn CFOP, which is on the end screen right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys all next time.